Hi, this is Marcus Giuliano from HealthyChefDude.com and HealthConsciousFood.com. I am here today talking. What is today? I never know. The, I never know the dates here. It's like um, let me let me hit the Mac here. January 18th, Monday, January 18th, Martin Luther King Day. Um, we had a busy night at the restaurant. I just came up into my office. I want to talk about something I was reading this morning. Seafood labeling bill urged. The state of Mississippi has a bill now um, that they're trying to pass where all seafood is going to be labeled in restaurants. So you can walk into a restaurant and see where it's from, its source of origin. Produce started doing this in New York on bills where, like when I get an invoice from a wholesale company, it has to state where it's from. If it's domestic, imported, what's going on. But now if you go to a restaurant in Mississippi, they're going to want to say on the, on the menu, Go to the grocery stores where it's actually from. That's extremely important, especially for me. I love seafood. Um, we do a lot of seafood here at the restaurant. So we rely upon this great thing called the Na uh, Seafood Watch from Monterey Bay Aquarium. And these are pocket guides. You can also get them on your phone. They're applications on the iPhone. Uh, and the neat thing about these are, Melissa, can you zoom in there? Best choices, better choices to avoid. It has fish all across here. What you, what are better choices as far as sustainability, pollution levels like mercury and bycatch issues? So as you read these, you're going to say, "Gee, there's alba, there's tuna in every three categories. What's the difference? Well, the difference is where they're from, because where they're from makes a huge difference as far as the contaminant levels, how they're caught, um, or if they're from certain farms. Because not all farmed fish are bad. Certain farms we want to avoid. Certain industries at farm we want to totally avoid." So, makes a big difference, like let's for instance on king crab legs. King crab legs, you walk into a store, you go into a restaurant, you think you're automatically getting Alaskan king crab legs because we all see the show Deadliest Catch, we see the guys in Alaska, we see them catching and oh wow, all king crab legs are from Alaska. That's totally wrong. If you look further at the labels, the packing labels, the boxes, you're either going to say caught in Russia, product of Russia, packed or processed in Russia caught in America, processed in Russia, or it could even go like this, packed or, or caught in Russia, packed or, or uh, processed in China. So now this bill will require restaurants to divulge the truth, because if you have a choice between a good old American king crab legs or Russian or Chinese packed, you obviously want to choose the American. So it's going to give some validity to what the better producers are doing. Same thing with salmon. Like caught a restaurant saying we have wild salmon. I'm like, well, where's the wild salmon from? Oh, it's from somewhere. They said, and I said, well, that's not the case because I don't believe that season's open right now. And it wasn't open. And the restaurant came back and apologized to me about 10 minutes after 15 minutes where they did their research. So if somebody says wild salmon, wild salmon is from the Pacific. But again, if you're buying like frozen in the store, you can find stuff that says product and processed in China or product and processed in America, Alaska, or caught in the USA. Makes a big difference if you're going to buy that. I know it makes a big difference for me as a chef uh, whether I'm going to buy that product or not. I don't want something that's, why do I have to buy something that's packed in China and caught in China when we have it in Alaska? So salmon is tricky because salmon will run down the coast from California to Washington State to Oregon up through British Columbia and then into Alaska. Well, British Columbia are all of Canada. Canadian laws are different than American laws. So if it just says wild salmon, if you go to a restaurant that says wild salmon, there's a huge difference in the way it's being caught and where the governing bodies are limiting the catches. In Canada, they're not going to limit the catches nearly as much as Alaska. Alaska is very uh, thorough with allowing the quotas to be caught, making sure enough fish spawn. Halibut is another one. Restaurants will say wild halibut. Most halibut is wild. I don't know of anybody that's farming halibut. I'm sure it might be done or maybe it's being experimented out there. Well, is it Atlantic halibut, which you want to avoid because it's on the avoid list here, Monterey Bay Aquarium, or is it Pacific halibut or specifically more Alaskan halibut, which is, a, again, a fish that is caught with um, more care and more care about the population recovering from catching it. Atlantic salmon does not, Atlantic halibut does not have that luxury. That's why certain things in the Atlantic Ocean, like cod, is decimated. <laughs> Salmon is totally decimated, Atlantic salmon, so that's why we've reverted to farmed Atlantic salmon. So this bill is great if it passes in Mississippi, and I hope other states, I don't know if any other states are doing this, but I hope this passes on to other states. I know when I 
write my menus, I'm extremely descriptive because I want customers to know where I'm buying the fish from and knowing that I'm taking the time and care to actually monitor each fish. I've been buying from a company called EcoFish for years. Uh, all the restaurants I've worked at and the current one that I own. And the nice thing is they'll tell you where it was caught, when it was caught, and how it was caught. Because to me it makes a huge difference, like for instance, Atlanta, uh, Pacific salmon, Alaskan salmon. We only buy line caught salmon because we want something that goes on one hook, one line, and it's pulled out of the water. Cheaper Alaskan salmon is going to be called what's gill netted, where the salmon swim into nets, and the, the nets are only a certain size, so when the salmon puts its head in and tries to back out, it gets caught in its gills. It's called gill netted. Now that salmon will sit in the net for hours upon hours until the nets are pulled up and suffering. That deteriorates the quality of the salmon. So it's very important that we buy line caught salmon where there's one hook, one line, one fish, you pull it out and it's quick and done. Same thing with tuna. We buy tuna Pacific Northwest from Oregon and Washington State. We don't touch Canadian. That's line caught, troll caught, one hook, one line, instead of tuna that's on a series of a hundred or a thousand hooks on something that's called a long line, which are catching a different type of tuna in the same area. But because they're a long line caught and there's thousands of hooks, and it's a mile, two miles long, these lines, you're going to catch bycatch, other things on, on, on these. Same thing, mahi's caught like this. So mahi that's coming from um, Ecuador or something might be a very sustainable growing fish, but if they're using long lines to catch these fish, they're catching sea turtles as half of their catch. Extremely important. Now, when you go to a restaurant, you know, it, they'll require you, hopefully, in Mississippi, to be able to say, well, it's, it's um, salmon or it's tuna from the Pacific Northwest, but I personally feel that it's extremely important to also say how they're catching it because a consumer wants to know. And when you look in places like the Seafood Watch, it'll tell you line caught salmon as opposed to net caught salmon. So it does do some differences in there. Um, farmed or trawled. And you can go on to Seafood Watch or if you go on to ecofish.com, they'll tell you a bunch of different catch methods. You can really educate yourself what's trawl, what's mid trawl, um, which is a big difference from trawling the bottom of the ocean and raking up all the valuable coral and sea life, as opposed to just dropping a net in the middle of the ocean and letting the fish swim in and pulling it up as opposed to long line and hook and line. Um, so they'll tell you all of that. Mm. So congratulations, Mississippi. I hope you guys get it passed. Um, I hope other states follow. Uh, and if they don't, go to a restaurant that you know where they're buying their products from or to a fishmonger or to the store where they, they're actually taking the pride in doing that. Until next time, healthychefdude.com, healthconsciousfood.com. You are what you eat. Oh, I almost forgot. Listen, can you zoom in on that card for me? I miss my buddy Eric. He hasn't been with me. Him, Eric and I have done a lot of beer blogs. And um, Eric from Green Earth Realty, who is a green builder, buddy of mine, who uh, you'll see on our blogs. He's just got off his eight-day fast. So uh, he's eating again tomorrow. So he should be a regular fixture around the restaurant again. He'll get involved in some of my health blogs with me because he's a health nut just like me. Now, Eric's avoided the whole thing on the Seafood Watch because he's a vegan, so he doesn't have to worry about picking and choosing fish. And I love to eat <laughs> vegan. Um, I do like fish as well. Um, I do prefer to eat vegan, but I do like to enjoy fish. Especially when I go out to eat, it's tough if you're a vegan and you go out to eat at most restaurants because there's only no thought put into vegan food. What's our time? 8.30. 8.30. We got we got, got a little another minute. I have a tendency to run over on these and YouTube doesn't like it and they won't invite me in to be a director yet. Maybe someday. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're a vegan and you go out to eat, it's tough at restaurants because they don't put much thought into vegan food. The chefs are really confusing. They know vegetarian. I was going to have to take away butter and cream. It gets a little confusing. So sometimes when I go out to eat, it's easier to order seafood for me but I'm, there's only a certain amount of seafood that I'll actually consume. And if I can't really confirm where it's from, then I just don't order the seafood because I really ask a lot of questions. I'm sure I'm one of those pain in the butts when I go out to eat because I, I go to and I ask. I, I went to Mississippi or to uh, New Orleans and I asked, well, where's this caught? How's it caught? And this and that. And nobody could really answer my questions. So stay tuned for more on seafood because I will post a lot more on seafood and it'll be on my blog. It'll be all plugged out there as soon as we keep building more and more content on it, which we're doing every day. Stay tuned, healthychef.com or healthconsciousfood.com. Until next time, you are what you eat.